Don Ho was an American pop musician, singer, and entertainer. He was perhaps best known for his song Tiny Bubbles, which was featured on the album of the same name. But he wasn't exactly just handed fame, fortune, and excess. He earned it. Five evenings a week, Don Ho performed on stage with his Hammond chord organ, singing a medley of his favorite songs and telling stories. He taught the crowd how to make a shaka hand sign, holding up his right hand while extending his thumb and pinky. He would tell visitors the gesture meant family in Hawaii, or at least it did when he was a kid. He then proceeded to lament about how kids these days just think it means hang loose. What Don Ho accomplished is a lot easier to describe than how he managed to do it. While his shtick might not be that difficult to recount, his magic was a lot harder to pin down. But that doesn't mean we're not going to try. Keep watching to see how Don Ho became Hawaii's first real superstar. From Lounge Singer to Superstar Donald Tai Loi Ho was born in the little Honolulu neighborhood of Kaka'ako. He was the second of eight children and hailed from Chinese, Hawaiian, Portuguese, and German-Dutch heritage. Don Ho's mother, Emily Honey Lamal Silva Ho Kanaoi, and his father, James Jimmy Ayu Ho, soon moved their family to Kanaohi. Don's meteoric rise to fame began in a cocktail lounge named after his mother in the town of Windward, Oahu. After returning from his tour of duty as an Air Force pilot, Don came home to manage Honey's. The lounge was packed every night during the years of World War II. When he took it over, however, it was pretty much a ghost town. That's when his father suggested he start playing music to attract patrons. Heeding his dad's advice, Don gathered up a couple friends who he knew played instruments and started a band. According to him, he was a fairly lousy musician at the time, so he tried his best just to play softly, but to his surprise, business started booming. Learning from his talented musician friends and putting in a lot of practice playing at the lounge, Don Ho started incorporating the local style of calling upon the audience to sing and dance on stage with him. While doing so, he slowly started developing his own unique musical style. In 1962, Don began playing in Waikiki. Eventually, this led to him landing a multi-year performance gig at Duke Kahanamaku's in the international marketplace. That's when Don Ho and his band started catching the attention of record labels and TV show talent scouts. It was during this period he grew the most as an entertainer and rising star. Backing him was his band, The Allies, comprised of Joe Mundo on piano, Al Akana on drums, Benny Chong on guitar, Manny Lagad Lagad on bass, and Rudy Aquino on xylophone, percussion, and a handful of other instruments. Don took center stage at his organ with a glass of Chivas Regal in his hand and a lit cigarette smoldering in the ashtray. The music these men produced was incredible, and Don Ho's humor was quick and witty. Tourists came to his shows, but so did locals, and eventually some Hollywood stars were in attendance. Don and his band would play three shows a night, seven days a week, and would routinely raise his glass of scotch to the audience, urging them to suck it up. And of course they would. Those raw, unbridled years turned Don Ho into a star and made Duke Kahanamoku's club the most popular hangout in Hawaii. During his years there, Don Ho blew up on the national showbiz scene. In 1966, he performed at a two-week event at Hollywood's super posh Coconut Grove. The opening night was enormously successful, breaking all previous attendance records, and Ho and his band went on to play sold-out shows every night for the remainder of the engagement. With such a triumphant debut, other, more prestigious opportunities came flooding his way. The Coconut Grove, for one, invited him back for more of that money-making magic. He was also given featured spots at the Sands in Las Vegas, Harrah's at Lake Tahoe, the Palmer House in Chicago, and at the American Hotel's Royal Box in New York. Before he knew it, Don Ho was sitting down talking to the late great Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. He followed that up by making TV appearances alongside stars like Art Linkletter, Johnny Cash, and Andy Williams, to name a few. He was also given his own hour-long TV specials sponsored by Singer and Kraft. All the while, Don Ho was pumping out chart-topping records on Reprise Records. He went from playing modest shows at his family's lounge in Hawaii to winning over fans all over the U.S. and beyond. It was a success story no one saw coming, but Don Ho earned every bit of recognition he received. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for a lot more about Don Ho. Don's Declining Health and Death 
Don Ho lived at his Diamond Head estate, raising his family, when in 1995, at age 65, he suffered a mild stroke. From then on, his health began to steadily deteriorate. In 2002, he learned he had developed cardiomegaly, or in layman's terms, an enlarged heart, leaving him with approximately 30% of normal cardiac capacity. Despite his health problems, Ho remained optimistic and continued to perform nightly shows, while making a few concessions when it came to his personal habits. For one, he swapped out that glass of scotch for a cup of pineapple juice. In 2005, Don Ho received a diagnosis of cardiomyopathy and subsequently had a pacemaker implanted. But unfortunately, that wasn't the end of his heart problems. On one occasion, his pacemaker malfunctioned while he was playing a show. On another, while he was making repairs on his roof, his heart started suddenly racing. He got in touch with a biotechnology company that specializes in treating heart conditions with stem cells working in tandem with Dr. Shoa, a cardiac surgeon and pioneer of stem cells for heart disease. On December 6, 2005, Don Ho had his own adult stem cells cultivated from his blood injected into his heart by world-renowned surgeon named Amit Patel and his associates in Thailand. It was reported Ho's treatment was a success, and his heart would be restored back to 75% capacity. In September 2006, Ho married Haumea Hebenstreit, a production assistant for his show at the Waikiki Beachcomber. Just a few days later, he went into cardiac arrest. While he had a new pacemaker installed on September 16, 2006, he collapsed and died of heart failure in his Waikiki apartment on April 14, 2007. He was cremated and his ashes were scattered at sea. The Death of Don Ho's Daughter Dana Ho Henry, Don Ho's daughter, was found dead on May 11, 2007, less than a week after she helped scatter her dad's ashes. While at first her death appeared quite mysterious, the police quickly assured the public no foul play was involved. It was eventually determined her death was the result of an accidental methamphetamine overdose. The 52-year-old was found unresponsive laying at her friend's home in Wailua on Oahu's North Shore on the morning of May 11. She was declared dead as soon as paramedics arrived. Ho Henry was the third of Ho's ten children. Her brother said it deepened the family's grief to learn how she died. Now it's time to hear from you. Show your respects to the late great songwriter by sharing your favorite memory of him in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.